Hello, corporate badasses. I hope you're having a wonderful week. I am coming to you live to answer a question that I received in my inbox. Um, by the way, if you're not already, if I'm not in your inbox, then you want to get on there right away. Go to stacymayer.com slash email and sign up. This is where I am communicating all the things that I'm working on, all my thoughts, all my ideas, and really incredibly valuable tips about what it's going to take to get you to that next level of leadership. My name is Stacey Mayer, and I am on a mission to double the number of women in the executive suite through self-advocacy, agency, and building allies all across your organization. And today's question that I received in my inbox is really, how do, what do we do if we share our accomplishments, but our boss doesn't really seem to care or even notice? Um, and this is a great question. It comes from the idea that we're supposed to share our accomplishments if we want to get promoted. Um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is sort of address that issue and really how I see it and how it actually works in terms of sharing your accomplishments and also why it might feel difficult to share your accomplishments right now, because the approach that you're taking might not be the most effective approach. Um, if while I'm talking, you have any questions or thoughts or comments, um, write them. I encourage you to share them in the comment section. I'll go back and I'll answer everyone's questions directly. So please, please, please let me know what you're thinking, what comes up for you personally. It really, really matters to me that my work is um, not only um, effective, but measurable. And actually, that's the first thing that I want to talk about today in terms of sharing your accomplishments, measuring your success. And I think this is difficult for a lot of people. It's not especially difficult for women, Some, although sometimes we'll hear that, that it's difficult for women to measure our accomplishments. Um, but I think that it's just a challenging thing to do. So the first thing I want to point out is that we share our accomplishments at work in two ways. One is in writing and the other way is verbally. And I think that these two ways of sharing our accomplishments are drastically different in how we're going to approach sharing about our accomplishments, but yet we mingle and mix and clump it all together. So let me first talk about sharing your accomplishments in writing, because that's kind of the easiest thing to tackle. So if you have ever shared your resume or LinkedIn profile with a professional, let's say that you're actively seeking work or actively seeking a promotion, and you actually share that piece of information with a professional, and you've been told that you don't have enough metrics or numbers in your resume or in your LinkedIn profile, you would not be alone. But there is an incredibly easy trick to kind of get that ball rolling and kind of jump over that hurdle almost immediately. And um, this was a trick that Kate Wade shared with our community, and she is a phenomenal resume expert and is helping women get um, promoted by interviewing and getting their resumes up to speed. But this incredible trick that she shared with us is to take your performance review stats and just transfer them over to your LinkedIn profile or your um, your resume, right? Because a lot of times our uh, performance review statistics are very measurable and it's kind of set up that way that we actually talk about the deliverables that we had. So that's just a tip straight out of the gate that you can just start doing and really think about how do I share my accomplishments in writing, right? Is it measurable? Can people see it? Now, I always promise you one of my core values is authenticity that I will never share anything with you that I am not working on actively myself. <laughs> and so in terms of sharing your accomplishments in writing, I want to admit very openly and freely that I'm terrible at this. So the reason why I know this for sure is because I recently hired a marketing consultant to come into my business and she was looking at some of the testimonials that I had and she said that, it looked like Thanksgiving dinner, like after you eat the dinner and they're really bloated and blah. <laughs> 
And, and then when she asks me questions very directly about the accomplishments and the number of promotions that my clients have received, it's really easy for me to share, to give her a lot of facts and figures as to the number of the salary increases, like everything. So many metrics are really easy for me to share verbally, but when, uh, and when directly asked with somebody that I trust, but I didn't have a way to collect these accomplishments, right? They would just sort of come into my inbox and then go away. Um, and so that's also another thing that I want to share with you is that in addition to your performance review and looking at that as a way to figure out your accomplishments and to really turn them into measurable statistics, um, create a collection file for yourself. And so that's what I started doing in terms of these testimonials. So I just started dumping things into a Google Doc file. Whenever somebody says I received a $25,000 pay increase or a $75,000 pay increase, or they write a glowing testimonial about their promotion and how it wouldn't have been possible without my support, right? Like all of those things, I just need to dump into a file so that I can start collecting that data. But really it comes from this commitment and this understanding that, that, that metrics and measurable success is really important, specifically in writing, right? We need to have those numbers and we need to know where we stand and um, why our work is so valuable. It's also a great reminder for us, right? When I look at this file, I, you know, I know that my work is impactful. I know that the process that I teach really works. But when I look at this file, I'm like, oh crap, like everybody else needs to know this too, right? So when terms of written measurable accomplishments, you really need to think about numbers and statistics and um, really deliverables, anything that you would put onto your performance review, you need to capture that information and start capturing it in like a Google file. And then that way, when your performance review does come up, you have all of that information right there. And then when you're, um, it's time to write your resume or update your LinkedIn profile, you have all of that information ready and available to you. Now, as I continue into sharing your accomplished verbally, what I want to um, instill upon you about accepted behavior in the corporate workplace. So it is, we are told as women that we need to share our accomplishments, yet it is incredibly uncouth to share your accomplishments verbally and like to brag, right? It actually doesn't make you seem important. It makes you seem less important. It makes you seem off-putting. It makes you seem annoying. It makes you seem like a braggart. And the thing is, is that a lot of women are too smart for their own good, right? So then they see that behavior and they're like, I don't want to be like that. So I just don't share about my accomplishments. So going back, it's way easier to share about your accomplishments in writing and at specific times of year, right? In specific situations. So have all of that data and metrics ready to go at the ready, like when it becomes performance review time, when it comes promotion time, right? Like you have all of that information as an arsenal to create your business case why you deserve more money, right? Like all of that great stuff, have that ready for yourself in writing. Now on to the verbal communication of sharing your accomplishments. Um, one of the reasons why our boss doesn't care about our accomplishments is because it's actually our job to do certain things, right? So if we hit a deliverable, it doesn't actually matter to our boss. Your boss is very busy. Your boss is trying to get their things done. Um, except for at performance review time, it's, it would be weird to continuously share about your accomplishments that you have with your team. That's not something that would be um, acceptable. And it's also something that you're not gonna be as willing to do, right? So um, I want to tell you a story about, um, so God, this was 15 years ago. I took a one woman show that I wrote and performed in to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which is one of the largest fringe festivals in the world. And it's in Edinburgh, Scotland. And um, I had a friend at the time who came along with me to this festival and he was freaking amazing in terms of tooting my horn, right? He would run around telling everybody how amazing I was, how amazing my show was, why they needed to come see it, what they needed to do, what the show was about. Everything that he said was better than I could have said it myself. And I remember thinking everybody needs something like this in their back pocket. 
So as I'm working with women, sometimes I'm trying to help them figure out who that person is and how they can get that language in their back pocket, that person who can advocate for us. So number one, when we're thinking about advocating and sharing our accomplishments verbally, get somebody else to do it, right? Use somebody else's language. Even if you're the one sharing it, you could say, I was talking to Jim yesterday and he mentioned how important this project was with XYZ, right? Like it's like, like put, put the sharing onto somebody else, right? So how are you going to get that information? When somebody gives you a compliment after a presentation and they say to you, oh my God, you were so amazing. Like, wow, I've never seen the board so taken aback by, um, you know, a presentation ever before, right? And I know so many of you have received these types of compliments. So first of all, put that in your accomplishment file for your written file, but also ask them why. What was it that you did that was so unique or outstanding? And how do you think it really affected the board at a, in a bigger way? And really get their language, use their words. And then say to your boss later on, like, oh my gosh, I was so proud. Jennifer came up to me after my presentation and she shared that the board had never been so um, taken aback by somebody's uh, presentation before, right? And, and maybe even share with your boss why. That is a very acceptable and easy way to begin sharing your accomplishments. And when we're dealing with the question, which is your boss doesn't care or take notice, it makes them take notice. When their boss cares about the work that you're doing, I guarantee you, your boss will start to notice what it is that you're working on. I am telling you right now. So that's the first thing is start gathering that I, those ideas and sharing the ideas of other people. Um, the second thing I want to share with you is that in terms of sharing our accomplishments, we're not going to sound the way that we do in writing. And that's really important to remember. You don't want to come off like you're spouting statistics and tooting your own horn. It's acceptable in writing, but it's not acceptable verbally, right? And so if it feels uncomfortable, it's because it's weird. <laughs> so stop doing it. Um, but what you can do is a concept that I call showing your work. So think about it like in math class when you couldn't just tell them the answer. You had to show how you came up with the answer. So when you're talking to your boss on your weekly check-ins or you're, you're scheduling a 15-minute ally meeting with one of the executives, you want to really share how you made decisions, how you were able to get this project across the finish line. What was the thought process behind it? Why were you able to um, make some hiring decisions so effectively? What is it about your history and your background that makes you exceptionally great at your job, right? So this is showing the why, showing the what behind the what, right? Really showing your work and sharing your accomplishments in that way. When you start to do this, you start to build trust with the executive team that you can lead at the higher level, right? It's not enough to just say, I accomplished this because they're like, okay, great. Can you do it again? Can you do it for me? Can you do it three levels up? Can you, right? And so they need to know how you came up with that solution. Everything I've shared with you today can also be applied to job interviews, Right. Instead of answering questions directly, like tell us about some of your accomplishments, you can tell about your accomplishments, but make sure that you're also showing your work, how you came across that. You can even share about some of the feedback that you receive from other leaders at your organization. If you've done a 360 assessment, share about the results of that assessment, right? That is a great way to share about your accomplishments in a way that's acceptable and that people can really understand and appreciate. By the way, um, inside my leadership table, the personalized track, I do 360 assessments for all of my clients. It's an absolute game changer. So if you want to know more about that, definitely DM me and let me know. Um, so let me recap here. First thing, if you feel like you're sharing your accomplishments, but your boss doesn't seem to notice or care, 
Number one, are you sharing your accomplishments and collecting your accomplishments in the right way, right? So is it verbal or written? You need to understand the differences and the nuances between the two. Because if you start sharing your accomplishments in a very metric driven way, verbally, it's going to sound dumb. And you're not going to want to keep doing it because it, it really does sound dumb. Um, and But it's important to start collecting that data and you can start doing that right now. The other piece is when you're sharing verbally, take the information of other people and start to share that, right? You don't know, be like, I felt really good when somebody shared this with me or they gave me this compliment or did you know that Sam said that this, right? Like start sharing what other people say about you. That is much more acceptable and it's much easier to do. And you can also do it from your heart, right? You can do it from like a genuine appreciation. And then the third thing is show your work. Make sure that you're really showing the why, how, how did you get to that solution? How did you create that accomplishment? It's really important for executive leaders to see that your, your leadership is scalable and isn't just tied to your subject matter expertise. All of this is part of building trust, which is one of the steps in my five-step executive promotion process. If you're not familiar with my work, if you're new to me, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are, congratulations. <laughs> um, so many of you have done really incredible things at your leadership table, and I'm so excited to see what we can create again, even in the second half of 2023. Um, so go to yourpromotabilityscore.com. This is a free quiz that I offer to you that breaks down the five steps of my executive promotion process. One of those steps being building trust, trust that you can lead at that higher executive level. Everything that I talked about today, I do deep dives into in my programs, direct coaching on it. If you are in my personalized leadership table, everything is available to you in um, different, various different ways. Whatever suits your needs, I have that. So definitely go to your promote ability, your promote ability score dot com and take my promotability quiz so that you can find out where you stand on the scale of getting promoted. Thank you all so much. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And otherwise, I'll see you again soon. Bye.